Hi, welcome back to my studio. It's Claire here from Irene in Pretoria and we haven't seen you in forever. Uh, December we had our Showtime uh, videos where we showed you uh, beautiful quilts that customers had made through the course of lockdown period and I think a lot of people were really inspired by that. We had some wonderful feedback. That was, that was really nice, but it meant that we didn't talk to you. We didn't get to see you. Instead, Talina and I, we both took a bit of a break, recharged our batteries, and this year already we've been working on how we can bring you an exciting program for the year ahead. And what we think we've sort of identified is a lot of people over this very weird lockdown period and COVID time, they've kind of lost their mojo. They're, I've been the same. When lockdown started, I thought, yes, I'm going to spend the next few weeks and I'm going to get this, this, this and this done. And ultimately, virtually none of it happened. The quilt behind me did get done eventually, but it took me way longer than I thought it was going to take. It took me pretty much 18 months rather than that couple of um, weeks that I thought originally. So there's a quote by Marilyn Monroe that goes along the lines of, if you give a girl the right shoes, she can rule the world. So Talene and I, we're going to give you the right shoes to get your mojo back. And each month, we're going to continue with our videos every week, short videos that don't take up too much of your time. And we're going to cover a topic a month so that we can give you those tools to really get back into your quilting and take it to the next level. Whether you're a beginner or whether you're more advanced, there's always going to be something that you can take from those short videos. Remember too, we've been doing this now for, I think this is our third year, so every video that we have ever put out is on our YouTube channel. So if you Google um, Handy Call to South Africa or under YouTube, then you'll find our channel. There are old vlogs and then last year there are different um, categories of videos. So we've got technical videos, we've got 60 second Saturday videos that we did. Um, we have educational videos, product videos. So if you're ever looking for information on something, go have a look there. It's a big library or we're building it as a library of resources for you that are at hand. You don't always have to feel like you're on your own out in in your studio all on your all alone and there's no one to help you so don't forget those resources are there it's on the youtube channel for handy quilter south africa so we want to get you started in february with basic rulers it's something we're often asked what are the rulers that i should start out with because let's face it there are hundreds that you can choose from and you don't need them all well you kind of do need them all, but that's only because we want them all, not we don't need them all. So what are the different options and what do we suggest that you get in the beginning? And we're also going to show you then a little bit about how you use them and designs that you can make using those specific rulers. So it's my turn this month. I'm going to start off with straight rulers um, and you can meet my hands in a minute, either in front of the machine or some drawing paper, and I'll tell you a little bit more about them. Okay, so I'm stood here at the back of my frame. I've got a nice tabletop in front of me that I can put stuff on and hopefully you can see nicely without too much reflection. If we're talking about straight edge rulers and specifically rulers for people starting out, then often we speak about the Versatool. So this machine, this ruler has got various options to it. There is a straight edge, but there's also a half circle there's a right angle and there's a shallow curve. So you've got a vers it's versatile in that there are a number of different things that you can do with it. That's great. In terms of the straight edge, any ruler that you're looking at, you want to see that there are marking lines that help you to space out your designs. So that is really important. This ruler also has these little tabs. So it allows you, you're always going to stitch a quarter inch away from the ruler so you're actually going to stitch on a line here but I can line up the edge of these tabs on this one specifically and stitch a quarter of an inch away from a ditch line perhaps. If you look at the ditch ruler, mine has got a point missing because I dropped it on the floor, it also has these tabs and this one is really great because line up those edges of those tabs with your seam line and where you stitch, 
is going to be exactly in that seam. It takes a little bit of figuring out when you're first working because remember your needle is not going to stitch on the edge of the ruler it's going to stitch a quarter of an inch away so it's actually going to stitch in line with these little pegs. Again this ruler it's got a whole load of different lines on it uh, that you can get different angles and different spacing so this one is a really good one. My favorite straight line ruler personally is the mini scallop. For me it's just a really nice size, it fits in my hand nicely and I just love to work with it. Um, it does have the um, added benefit of a mini scallop on this side of it, not just your straight edge, um, which just adds a little bit to it. Rulers are really expensive so the more uses you can get from them obviously the better it's going to be. Then there are various straight, just purely straight edge rulers. Let me just put them down there. This one on the left is the 12 inch straight edge ruler. That's a really nice one for longer lines. And then this is a skinny. It is 10 inches long. So it's a little narrower and a little shorter. All of them are really good. My 12 inch ruler is a little bit older. The newer ones have more marking lines on. But you will see there are even on this one you've got different 45 degree angles and you've got different um, quarter inch markings here to help you space things out. Another quick point whilst we're here you can see on my 12 inch ruler I've got some dots of handy grip. Those are really good on the bigger rulers because they stop the ruler from sliding around whilst you're using it. It doesn't stop it 100% but it does make a big difference. So I tend to use handy grip only on my larger rulers and on shapes that I really don't want them to move. Straight edge rulers, I tend to slide them a lot along the fabric. So then I want a little less grip so that I can move it easily without having to stop and actually lift it up. The skinny ruler, I don't know how well you can see, it looks a little bit opaque. This one has a spray on it. Uh, it's called stencil spray that makes the back of the ruler just a little bit tacky. Um, it's something that I've been testing to see whether I like it and I do. It's not bad at all. It is again one of those things you have to get used to. The ruler doesn't slide around as much and sometimes I actually want it to slide. So it just depends on the purpose. I have this grippy grip spray on the back of my skinny ruler but not on the back of some of my others. So then I can interchange between them and see which I feel most comfortable with. Alright, so remember I said about having multiple uses for rulers. This one is the mini circles and this one is a mini oval. So they have shapes that you can use but if you look at it, it also has straight lines. So you've got a beautiful straight line, a nice long straight line on the edge of here. And if you're using the mini oval for something, you can easily use some of these sides as straight lines as well. And there are markings on the rulers that help you to line up. So look a little bit more widely at the rulers that you've got and see how you can maximize the use of them. They don't only have to be an oval ruler, it can work as a straight ruler as well. Okay, so here we are at my machine. This is a handy quilter Amara on a frame. So you might also be quilting on a domestic machine or on a sedan machine. You can do exactly the same stuff with your rulers. You're just going to use the ruler to help you push your fabric under the, the machine past the needle rather than maneuvering the machine around the ruler. So I have my ruler base attached to the machine to make sure I have a bigger surface area. It is a must if you're going to quilt with rulers on your frame. It just makes it so much safer and more stable. That flat surface area just makes life so, so much easier. I also have on a sure foot, which is the deeper ruler foot that Handy Quilter makes. The standard foot that also comes with your machine is a ruler foot, but it is narrower or lower on half of the foot and built up higher at the back. It just means that if you're using that you have to be a little bit careful because your ruler can jump up 
and land on top of the foot and you could end up trying to stitch through it which is not going to do your needle or necessarily your machine timing a lot of good so if possible go with the sure foot the deeper foot if you have a different brand of machine make sure that you are using a ruler foot definitely 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 on your um, domestic machine do not try to use your normal quilting foot if you're using rulers you are asking for trouble okay so I have my little versatile ruler here and we're just going to start with some piano keys so I'm gonna put my ruler down against the edge of my foot and when you look at it you will see that the edge of the foot to the needle is about is a quarter of an inch distance so every time I stitch I'm making sure that my ruler is secure so I've got my hand flat on the um, ruler and just slightly over onto the fabric so it's holding everything nice and still and I'm holding the machine into the ruler as well so let's move across I'm going to eyeball about an inch so from my previously stitched line to my needle I want about an inch so that's not quite enough what that means is if I look at my ruler each line here is a quarter inch spacing apart so the first line would be a quarter inch the second line a half inch three quarters of an inch plus remember I've got a quarter of an inch between the edge of my foot and the needle so all those measurements will end up being an inch so I want to line up the third line on the ruler over my previously stitched line and what I am using on my machine I am in a cruise mode which is one of the regulated modes I have 11 stitches per inch and my cruise speed is 125 if you have an older machine you probably want to look at about 7 to 10 percent of your your cruise speed and what I do is when I press start I just wait for one stitch one or two stitches and then start to move the machine Generally, when I want to move my ruler, I physically stop the machine. I find it just so much easier. So I can turn the ruler, I'm going to eyeball more or less my inch, turn my ruler around, put the third line over my previously stitched line. And you can see I've done this a few times, so my judging is pretty good. And off we go. If you're feeling a little more confident, you can actually just keep the machine running. Slide your ruler across till you're on the third line and go again. Just try and keep your stitching slow and steady. Try not to race off once you are in position. Go nice and steady that your stitch regulator can give you the best quality stitches. So we're going to come across again, line up my third line on the ruler and stitch down. If my ruler's not long enough, I can literally just slide it down a little bit and I'm good. So I'm getting here currently these are inch spacings if I want half an inch spacing for instance I've got a quarter of an inch from my needle to the ruler so to make half an inch I need to line up the first line on the ruler with my previously stitched line so it's really quite easy once you get going and all these markings on the ruler just make life so much more simple I'll do a few of those for you then I have quarter inch spacing if I sorry that is half inch spacing if I want quarter inch spacing I'm literally going to put the edge of my ruler against my previously stitched line and stitch across all of the time making sure that my machine foot is against the ruler and that the ruler is pressed up against the machine there's no point in having a ruler if you're not actually stitching against it. So your perspective is a little odd because you're coming from the side, but I've got inch spacing, I've got a half inch spacing, and then I've got the quarter inch spacing here. We can make it easier as well. You don't even have to use the lines on the rulers. This is a stencil that gives me half inch spacing. So if I pounce it onto my quilt, I have my lines, now I can just stitch those. I don't have to worry. I literally place the needle over the line and stitch. So this is one of those times where a ruler without too many markings that's not necessarily designed as a straight edge ruler like this one could be used. So let's try. This is the mini, mini circle ruler. I'm just going to stitch up until I'm over the first line. And 
just use my ruler then as my guide to be able to stay on that line. Coming across. Okay, here I've got basically representing a two inch sashing and I've used a two inch line stencil to pounce myself lines that are two inches apart and I'm purely going to use the points where those lines meet the edge of my sashing and the versatile with the straight edge here it's a little short straight edge so it works perfectly to make myself a little triangle border to start with. So let's go and remember you have to position your ruler so that the edge of the ruler is not bang over the point where I want the point of my stitching to be. It has to be a quarter of an inch away. That's the trickiest part about quilting with rulers really. And even that you soon get the hang of it. I'm going to do one more. So I've got like a zigzag border going along here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the markings where the pounds had got like a little chip out of it from the the way the stencil is constructed I'm going to use those points to make myself a little chevron so I'm going to quilt back in the opposite direction aiming the needle always for those little points in the marking one I've just got myself a couple of blocks that are marked out here it's a four inch um, height so it could be a border or it could just be a way of filling an area and I'm just going to fill it with randomly spaced lines and random directions as well so maybe I'll do this one vertically this one I'll choose an angle and this one horizontally just to show you the different effects and I'm going to use my favorite ruler this is the mini scallop um, but I'm not actually going to use any of the lines I'm just going to go with my eye and vary the sizes of the lines so here we go So there we've got a couple of quick blocks dashed out and basically we're just creating texture. You don't have to be completely precision all the time with a ruler. Yes, it can offer you that um, ability to have an evenly spaced lines, but you don't have to. You can do it exactly as you wish. Remember too, I've got a white thread or a cream thread on a blue fabric to make it show up so you can see under the camera. But if you were doing this with a more blending color, matching thread, then you're just going to see the texture. You're not going to see so much of that thread color. I hope this gives you a couple of ideas of what you can do with your straight edge rulers and give you some confidence to start quilting. Enjoy! <laughs>